What a great book. You know, I think this is the only book that I've read more than once, and I've read it four times now. It's On the Road by Jack Kerouac, a, a classic. And do you ever get that feeling when you finish reading a book and you just want to tell everyone about it? But you need the vocabulary to be able to do so, right? So in this video, I'm going to teach you 10 adjectives that are perfect for describing books. And of course, if you're taking a Cambridge English exam, uh, you may need or choose to, to write a review for part two of the, the writing paper. So these adjectives will be really useful for that too. Those of you who saw my last video will know that I'm offering some free advanced vocabulary flashcards, which you just need to click on the link in the description to, to download and you'll be added to my email list and you'll get more uh, flashcards in the future, including the vocabulary from this video and my last video. There was a problem with the link um, in the, the description of the last video, so for those of you who tried to, to download them but you couldn't, it should work this time. Okay, but let's get started with the first adjective to describe books, and this one is really specific for books. It's a very long adjective, and it is unputdownable. Unputdownable. What a strange word, right? Well, you've probably realized that this is actually using a phrasal verb to put down um, and making a new word with it, um, an adjective in this case, by also adding uh, a suffix and a prefix. So put down is the phrasal verb, put downable with the suffix and unput downable. You can probably imagine or infer the meaning. Uh, it just means very difficult to put down. Now, it's particularly referring to a book. Of course, you can't describe a film as being difficult to put down because you watch a film at the cinema or on the television. I guess nowadays you could because you, often people watch films on tablets or, or mobile phones and it's difficult to put the mobile phone down. But no, we don't use that adjective for films. It's only for books. And as I said, it's used to describe books which are so interesting, so absorbing, so engrossing. These are adjectives we're going to look at later, by the way, uh, that you just can't put it down. You feel the, the, the need to continue reading it. So a quick example sentence. It's an amazing book, totally unputdownable. <laughs> totally unputdownable. So you just feel like you have to keep on reading it, keep on reading it. The next word, and I'm going to have to admit I, I lied in the title to this video because it's actually not an adjective, it's a noun, um, but we do use it for describing types of books. Um, it would have been very difficult to make the title of the video nine adjectives and one noun to describe books, so I hope you forgive me for that. Uh, but it's page turner, a page turner. So again, perhaps you can infer the meaning. Uh, it's a book that makes you turn the pages. So it, again, it's very uh, interesting. It's very engaging that you, you have to keep on reading. You have to keep keep on turning the page to see what happens next. It's very similar to Unputdownable, but just a different perspective. So rather than a book that you can't put down, it's a book that you can't stop turning the pages to see what happens next. So the example is, the novel is such a page turner that I didn't go to sleep until 3 a.m. So if you're reading in bed and you, you start reading this really uh, engrossing book and you just keep turning the pages, uh, perhaps you lose track of the time and you don't go to sleep until very late. Okay, the next three adjectives are basically synonyms. They have a very similar meaning. They're all positive, and I've used some of, some of them already to, to describe the, the previous two words. Um, so I'm going to teach them together, but I'll use different examples for each one. So we have absorbing, engrossing, and gripping. And all of these adjectives refer to something, books in this case, which hold your attention, which keep your attention, that you, they, they take all of your attention, basically. It's all about attention. So they're, they're positive adjectives, of course, when referring to books. Um, so let's look at three examples, one for each adjective. Justin Bieber's autobiography is surprisingly absorbing. <laughs> okay, I, I, I haven't read Justin Bieber's uh, autobiography, but um, it's just an example. Perhaps you don't expect Justin Bieber's autobiography to be absorbing, but maybe it is. I'm sure he is. he's had a very interesting life. But his autobiography is surprisingly absorbing. An example with engrossing now, uh, it's just the kind of engrossing book that I need to dis disconnect at the end of the day. So when you've had a very busy day, a stressful day, and you just need to disconnect, you need to forget about work or family, whatever, this book is very engrossing, so it, it, it helps you disconnect. And an example with gripping, I was on the edge of my seat. The story was so gripping. So if you're on the edge of your seat, it's when you're very anxious to know what's going to happen. 
Often when we're watching a football match on television, if it's a really exciting football match, you can be on the edge of your seat. So just, just before you fall off the, 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 the seat. So in this case, the book is so gripping that I'm on the edge of my seat. Okay, well, those adjectives are very nice, right? They're all very positive about good books, books that you like. But what if you don't like the book? You wouldn't recommend it in a review, for example. You need some, some vocabulary for that, right? So I have a couple of negative adjectives now. And the first one is long-winded, long-winded. And this means too long or using too many words. The author has a long-winded way of describing situations. I wish he would just get to the point. So this book is perhaps difficult to read because the author spends too long, too many words just describing a situation. And I wish he would just get to the point. The next adjective, again, it's a negative one. Uh, it's again, could be used in many situations, but it, it's also good for books. Uh, tedious, tedious. And tedious basically just means boring. Really, it's a synonym of boring. Uh, also tiresome, tedious, a tedious situation. In this case, we use it to describe a tedious book. So the example is, I'm afraid I found the storyline rather tedious. In this case, for me, the storyline was boring, it was tiresome, wasn't engaging, it wasn't gripping, it wasn't absorbing, it wasn't a page turner, it wasn't unput downable. It's basically the opposite of those, those ideas. And the next adjective is quite positive. It's not as positive as the others, the, the, the first five adjectives I taught, but it's, it's a nice ad adjective to use, especially to, to describe novels, as you'll see from my example in a moment. But the adjective is evocative, evocative. And something that is evocative, it makes you remember something or imagine something. So it may be evocative of something that happened in your life. So it evokes the memory of something that really happened in your life. Or it could be evoking um, something that you imagine, which is more relevant to books. Generally, the adjectives I've taught until now, most of them have, are most, mostly used to describe novels or fiction. But of course, you may read a factual book. Self-help books, for example, are very popular nowadays. And you can't, for example, use evocative to describe a self-help book. So I have a couple of adjectives to finish which are good for describing factual books. And the first one is edifying, edifying. And that means instructive or informative. So the example sentence is, it's a self-help book, but it's more edifying than the typical ones. So I don't know if you've read many self-help books. I've read a few and often you sort of finish them and you think, okay, that's, that's great, but I didn't really learn that much. It wasn't very instructive, not very informative. Um, but the book I'm talking about in this example is actually very edifying. So I found it very useful, very informative. Another similar adjective, which can be used to describe similar sort of these types of factual self-help books is illuminating, illuminating. You may have heard of the, the adjective illuminating and you can even probably infer the meaning. So again, it, it's kind of informative, um, but more about providing clarity on, on a topic. So again, the example, the book is really illuminating. I learned so much. I feel much more intelligent now. <laughs> Do you ever read a book when you finish it, you just feel more intelligent? <laughs> Maybe you'll forget everything that you, you read in the book, but you still feel intelligent. So yeah, illuminating and edifying are very useful for those types of factual books. Okay, don't forget to click on the link in the description to get those advanced vocabulary flashcards. They're completely free. And don't forget to come up with your own examples for this vocabulary. Uh, you really want to remember them because they can be very useful for your English in general, and especially if you're taking a Cambridge English exam. Okay, see you soon.